Okay, so the biggest difference in this problem is that when you see this, the reason you know you're going to use a different technique is because you see that there's a negative in front of the x squared. Okay. So again, the biggest difference for this problem is that if you see a negative in front of the x squared, you're going to use a different technique here. So our first step is always to let f of x equal 0. So we set this to equal 0. The different step that we would do here is we would factor out a negative from everything on the right-hand side. Okay. If this was on the left-hand side, then it would be everything on the left-hand side. So what we're going to do again is we're going to factor out a negative. So we're going to take a negative from x squared. This becomes x squared. We're going to take a negative from positive 6x, and this becomes a negative 6x. We're going to take a negative from the negative 8, and this becomes positive So what happens here is that if you take a negative from a positive number, it becomes negative. If you take a negative from a negative number, it becomes positive. Okay. The second new thing we're going to do is we're going to divide everything by negative 1. This is to get rid of the negative. It cancels out the negative from this side. We get 0 equals x squared minus 6x plus 8. And now we can use the same steps as before. We can make the diamond again as an organization. We put the 8 on top. We put the negative 6 on the bottom. And again, you want to think about what two numbers, when multiplied equals the top number, but when added together equals the negative number. A huge clue for us here is that because the bottom number is a negative, we know that either one or both of them is going to be negative. Because we know the top number is positive, we know that both of them are, are going to be negative. Right? So again, just by looking at this, we know that because the bottom number is negative, we know one or both numbers are negative. But because the top is not a negative number, we now know that both of them are negative. Okay? So that's something you kind of want to think through when you're solving this. The different factors here are 1 and 8, 2 and 4, and that's it. So if you think about it, 1 plus 8, there's no way it can equal negative 6, even if they're both negative. 2 and 6 could equal 6 if they are both positive. But since this is a negative 6, we can think about this as negative 2 and negative 4. Right? Because when you add them together, they equal negative 6. When you multiply them, they equal positive 8. We would go ahead and rewrite this as x minus 2, x minus 4. We would set these both to equal 0 just by our 0 product rule. Okay. And then we can go ahead and solve. And that's our answer. x equals 2 or x equals 4. So really the main difference here is that if there's a negative in front of our x squared, we have to factor out the negative first, divide both sides by a negative, and then we can solve normally. So the only difference here is that, again, if there's a negative in front of the x squared, then you want to factor out a negative, then divide by negative to take the negative out. This is probably pointless, but why do we, like, what's the purpose of getting rid of negative? So the point of taking out the negative is so that it's easier to see and solve for the factors. Oh. The reason being, if we didn't factor out the negative, then you would have to factor this out as like negative x times x, and then it would be kind of funky like this. Yeah. Question? Um, for the, uh, the top the equation is negative x squared plus 6x minus 8, but for the third time, we're going to be 
Oh, sorry. This should be. Uh, oh wait, for the third time I read it, yeah. it's positive. The third time you wrote it, it said plus eight. Yes. So the difference between the second line and the third line is that I took out a negative, right? So I, I factored out a negative from both the negative x squared, so that becomes a positive x squared. And then the positive 6x, I factored out a negative, and it becomes negative 6x. Right. So when I take out a negative from positive 6x, it becomes negative 6x. Does that make sense? And then from the negative 8, I take out a negative, and it becomes a positive. So the reason is because I'm like taking out a negative from all the different numbers. Okay. And that flips all, basically it flips all their signs. Okay. Good question. Okay, so we'll move on to the second problem. The second problem is an application of the first so it is x squared minus 1. It's x squared minus 1. So here you could actually still use the diamond method, but again, we should look at this, and then we should be able to look at this and identify that it is one of the product rules. right? So because of that, because it doesn't have a just an x by itself, we would know that this is part of the product rule, so it would be x plus 1, x minus 1 equals zero. And again, the first product rule is that if you have alternating numbers, then the second number is going to be that number squared, and the first one is just x times x. If you wanted to do it the old method, you would just put negative one here, you would put zero here, right? You would put the negative one here, you would put zero here because there's zero x, and then you would think about what two numbers when multiplied equals negative one, but when added together equals zero. So you're always going to have the same number, just alternating signs. So it doesn't matter if you have negative one on that side, positive one, and that's how we can get the factors over here. So again, you're just making a shortcut by identifying a pattern. x plus one equals zero, x minus one equals zero. Technically, it's kind of redundant to solve for it, but again, because we, we know it's alternating, it's going to equal either one. Sorry, that's not meant to be a negative. So x equals negative one or x equals positive one. And that's our answer. Okay. Um, for those of you that are zooming through this, the answers are in the front, in front of the stapler, if you wanted to check your answers. And those that are already working on the problems, the answers are already there. Question? So the reason you cannot do that is because this is a product of two things. Um, if we were to do like, like this, that would technically mean it could be x plus 1 times x minus 1, or it could be x plus 1 times x plus 1, or x minus 1 times x minus 1. It just, it's like unclear what that would mean. So because of that, uh, because it's a little bit unclear, we would write it just like this. But that's a good question. So basically we can't write it like this. It's not a good thing. Okay, the last problem here, again, the last problem we have is f of x is equal to 3x squared minus 12x. Okay, our first step is always to let it equal 0, so we just let it equal 0. Um, I will say that for this one you could use the diamond method, um, but this one makes it a little more difficult. So what you want to do is you actually want to factor out something that goes into both 3x squared and minus 12x. So you actually want to factor out something that goes from 3x squared and minus 12x. So you want to think about a number and also x that goes into both. For these, if I look at this, 
likely it's going to be the number in the front. So 3 goes into both 12 and 3x. I'm also going to take out an x from both of them. It's going to equal x minus 4 times 3x. Again, the reason we do this is to manipulate it so that now we can use the zero product rule to say that, well, if this equals zero, then we can find our zero. Or if x minus 4 equals zero, that's our zero. So this is 3x is equal to zero, or x minus 4 equals zero. So again, the whole reason we do this is so that we can go to this point, the zero product rule. We divide by 3 on both sides, we plus 4 on this side, x equals 0 or x equals 4. And that's it. Okay. So this one's a little different because you would have to factor out a 3 and you want to factor out the x. Okay, that's it for the notes. So what you want to do is you want to work on at least two tiers. Uh, you can work on tier 1, tier 2. There are some difficult ones on tier 2. Um, and again, the answers are in the front if you are done. And then there are three tiers of problems.